Hello, welcome to Prajim Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part one of SQL Server. In this session, we'll understand how to connect to SQL Server using SQL Server Management Studio. What is SQL Server Management Studio and the different authentication methods that can be used to connect to SQL Server. Now, you need to have SQL Server Management Studio already installed on your machine. If not, there are several articles on the web which can help us how to do that. So once you have SQL Server Management Studio installed on your machine, to open that, go to the Start menu, select All Programs, and depending on the version of the SQL Server that you have installed, you should see a respective folder here. For example, if you have installed SQL Server 2005, you should see a folder for that here, Microsoft SQL Server 2005. On my machine, I have Microsoft SQL Server 2008, so I see a folder for that. Expand that, and within that folder, you should see SQL Server Management Studio. Now select that. Once you select SQL Server Management Studio, you should see a Connect to Server window coming up. And this is the place where we specify the information that is required for SQL Server Management Studio to connect to a SQL Server database. Now, SQL Server Management Studio and the SQL Server database are two different things. Okay, so a database server typically contains all the tables and the data, you know, any SQL Server management object that you create. For example, it could be trigger, view, tables, data related to those tables, etc. All of that will be stored centrally on that database server. And to connect to that database server, the client tool that we generally use is SQL Server Management Studio. So keep in mind, SQL Server Management Studio is just the client tool to connect to the database server, and it is not the server by itself. So in a typical development environment, the database server might be installed on one centralized machine, and usually developers can connect to that using a SQL Server Management Studio that's installed on their respective machine. In this example, you can see that we have four developers and from each of the developer machine we can use the SQL Server Management Studio specify the information about this database server for example from that from this developer machine one you know if I have to connect to the SQL Server database okay I need to tell okay this is the server name and user ID password and how do you want to connect from this machine to this server do you want to use Windows authentication or SQL Server authentication okay the point to keep in mind SQL Server Management Studio is just the client tool and not the server by itself. And now we will see how to configure SQL Server Management Studio to connect to a database uh, server. So if we go back, okay, so this is the window that we typically see when we open up SQL Server Management Studio for the first time. Now, the first choice that we have to make is to specify the server type. Usually, it's the database engine. Okay, but if you are if you want to connect to analysis services or reporting services or integration services, which are also respectively called as SSAS, SSRS, and SSIS. SSIS means SQL Server Integration Services, SSRS means SQL Server Reporting Services, and SSAS means Analysis Services. We don't want to connect to any of them. We are, we just want to connect to the database server. So that's why we use the database engine here. Okay, in a later module, when we talk about SQL Server integration services and reporting services, we will see how to connect to those, um, you know, databases using the respective options here. Okay, for now, it's database engine, and you also need to specify the server name. Now, if you have an environment like this, you know, where you have a database server on a centralized machine, then you need to specify the name or IP address of that server okay but here on my machine you know the database server and the SQL Server Management Studio both are installed on my machine the database server is also present on my local machine so if that's the case then I can specify the IP address of my computer itself you know the local IP address which is 127.0.0.1 this is also called as loopback IP address if you're from a networking background so to refer to the local machine I can use the loopback IP address which is 127.0.0.1 or I can also just say dot so the dot specifies that I want to connect to the local server or I can specify local keyword here 
So any of these will tell the SQL Server Management Studio we want to find an installation of SQL Server database on the local machine and not over the network. So you can either use local dot or an IP address 127.0.0.1. So you can use any of these. Okay, so once we have the server name specified, then the important decision that we have to make is how do we want to connect to the database server? Do we want to use Windows authentication or SQL Server authentication? Now, the options available here for you to connect depends on how you have configured the SQL Server during installation. When we were installing, when we were, when when we are installing SQL Server, basically it provides us with two options for authenticating against that installation of SQL Server. You know, the two options are mixed mode authentication or SQL Server authentication. So if you choose mixed mode authentication, then it means both of these options will be available for you to connect to the SQL Server. If you have just chosen SQL Server authentication, then you cannot use Windows authentication. So the options available here for you to connect to the SQL Server are basically dependent on how you have installed the SQL Server. Okay, for now, let's choose SQL Server authentication. Okay, if you choose Windows authentication, then you don't have to provide any of the username or password. Okay, that's because, um, I mean, Windows authentication basically uses the Windows login that you have used to log into this computer. So you have already authenticated yourself to log into this computer. So basically, that username and password, the Windows username and password, will be used to validate you against this database. On the other hand, you can also use SQL Server authentication. So when you use SQL Server authentication, when you are installing SQL Server again, you would have specified what is the username and password that you want to use to connect to this installation of SQL Server. So you specify that username and password. Typically, we specify that as SA, system administrator, and a password for that. Okay, So we have to provide that username and password. So let's provide that username and password, and then I can click Connect. So now when I click Connect, it should connect to a, a an installation of SQL Server that's locally installed on that machine. And once that's done, look at this, it's it, it has connected to the local SQL Server on this machine, and then I can basically see all the databases okay, and the security-related stuff. Now this window on the left-hand side is called the Object Explorer window. Okay, where you can see the database objects. You can explore through those database objects. That's why it's basically called as Object Explorer. Now, if I have to write a query, then I need a space to do that. And the first thing you have to do is click on this New Query button on the top left-hand corner. That should bring you up a new query editor window where basically we can type and execute queries. Okay, but again, to type and execute queries, we need a database. So what's a database? A database is a collection of tables and all your database objects. Okay, we'll see in the next session how to create a database and we will start writing queries. Okay, yes. now, so this is your object explorer. This is your query editor window. And if I just hover my mouse over there, it shows me I am connected to the local machine. And then there you see something called dot .master. That's nothing but the database context that we are currently in. So here you can switch the database you know, against which you want to write a query. Now you might be wondering, how did I get all these databases here? For example, um, system databases. If I expand that, I have master, model, msdb, tempdb. So what are these? As the name suggests, these are system databases. And how did they get in here? When I installed SQL Server, they automatically got installed. And these are required for the functionality of the SQL Server. Okay, and we can also create user-defined databases, you know, by just right-clicking on that and selecting new database, which we'll be doing in the next session. Okay, basically this session is all about how to connect to SQL Server. And the point that we have to keep in mind is that SQL Server Management Studio is not a server by itself, because many people get confused by that. It is just a client tool to connect to the SQL Server. On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET and C-Sharp interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.